What do you need to know about the punching bag? Well, first of all, a very smart approach to this projectile. The fact is that a boxing bag, like a barbell, is very traumatic. Without this projectile, the boxer will not be able to create force. That is, this projectile is needed to set the force of the punch and confidence. As for injuries, the fact is that there are a lot of bones in the wrist itself. That is, it simply breaks at once. If you approach this projectile incorrectly, you hit it incorrectly once, then for a month to six months, you won't approach it at all. You just get injured. Injuries not only to bones, joints, tendons, but also are reflected in the spinal cord and brain. That is, by and large, you can destroy yourself very quickly with this projectile. If you approach it incorrectly, you can punch it thoughtlessly. That is, this is associated with injury. The second thing you need to know about this bag. Of course, this bag is the main equipment for boxers. That is, by and large, there is nothing cooler than it. And somewhere around 80% of the total time the boxer spends on the punching bag, studying it, understanding it, and so on and so on. The fact is that a punching bag is not a living person. And if a living person changes angles during a fight, changing directions, and so on and so on, then the punching bag is motionless. The first thing to train on a boxing bag is punching, through the principle of punching. That is, while you punch, your bones become stronger, your joints become stronger, and you also grow in the very mechanics of movement. That is, the direction of the punch. That is, you already understand the distance of the punch, what it is. All this is done through punching. This is the most important point. By and large, everything that you see on the internet under the name of professional punching is actually punch training. There are many types of back punching. When a boxer really gets stronger in his lines, his punch directions. What is professional punch placement? Professional placement of a punch is a hundred percent understanding of the modification of a boxer already in a fighting position. The fact is that if the bag does not change its position, then during a fight the slightest deviation can simply lead to collapse. You think you are throwing a punch, but in fact, yes, you are throwing a punch, but you are putting it on a back, not on a living person. To deliver a punch to the back, as if it were alive, you need to understand 100% of the modifications in fight. So, in fact, people who can teach you how to punch professionally, for example, a quick punch, an invisible punch, a jab, or a main one, a punch, or some kind of hook. In Russia, there are very few such people. That is, there are good dozen in the whole country, people who understand what it is. Therefore, well, there is no need to have any illusions. And I really feel sorry for the boys. So for a year he punches a back, then goes into the ring, and he can't show anything of this. Because of which? Due to the fact that he is used to hammering the back, and mindlessly. So they gave him half an hour to work on the back, and for half an hour he just tore the whole back. Yes, he trained a punch on the back, but it won't work with a living person. So, don't waste time, guys. Approach this back very, very smartly. Now, there are three types, the main three types of back. Soft, hard, and medium back. That is, a soft back, well, of course, for beginners. That is, I will explain. A lot of moments are associated with punching backs. That's exactly when you punch a back. That is, why do you need a soft back? Because the bones are not strong. 
the muscles are not strong. So as not to break your hands again, it is better to rehearse this on a soft back. And then, as necessary, the density of the back must be increased. Let me explain. At the very beginning, if you are a beginner, you cannot wrap your hand, you can't wear a glove or anything, until you have the correct positioning of your fist to punch. That is, correctly. This is the position of the fist in itself, all of its parts, elbow deflection, shoulder extension. There are so many nuances that you just need to get into. So, don't bandage your hands. They bandage your hands when you have really achieved high, high strength. If there is no bandage, then the punch will simply break your hand. You will break your arm. You should be well warmed up. That is, after good dynamic gymnastics, you can start training your arms. I can show you the simplest training. What I started with, the simplest things, that is, the first thing is warming up on a back. Warming up on a back includes both legs and arms, that is, first, you need to stand close to the back, as much as possible, at the back of your head, at this distance. The simplest punching is done with free hands, that is, something that can be done mechanically by hand. Here is a punch from below. A professional punch is consistent and comes after practicing punching. After a professional punch, the most difficult part begins. This is when the tactics begin, the technical development of series and techniques. There are a lot of difficulties. That is, you literally bring the bag to life and for you it suddenly becomes alive. Everything is set here. The movement of the legs, the movement of all kinds of defenses, the position of the distance, how you stand, where your opponent will move. You have all this in your head through ideomotor training. That is, what is ideomotor training? This is a presentation. For example, sitting in a chair or lying down, you can really imagine the whole picture of the fight. That is, your whole picture of the fight, all your movements are so polished, that by closing your eyes, you can imagine the whole picture of the fight. You do the same thing with the back. Sometimes professional boxers, this happens in my gym too often. The boys who already understand what it is, they work with the back and mutter something under their breath. Well, like, come here, something like that in general. Therefore, this projectile is really complex. This projectile can cripple you. Therefore, it is necessary to study it very competently, step by step, through training, until professional training for fight. The first thing you become familiar with through punching is the mechanics of movement. That is, this is a very clear training from the point of view of physics. Then there is also anatomical rigidity. What is anatomical rigidity? This is how your hands get stronger. The first mistake, the boys wrap their hand, put on a glove. This concerns beginners. That is, the muscles are not yet formed, they are not formed for compression. Well, how can I say this correctly? The correct position for placing the fist when punching. And now they make themselves in a generally uncomfortable position so much, so that during the punch, their line of punch changing so much, that if they get used to it, it will be very difficult to simply retrain them muscularly in a different way. It's easier to build everything again. Therefore, the very first lessons, especially on the mechanics of punching, should be done with your bare hand. But I say again, there is a degree of caution through punching, because even if you rub off the skin, you cannot hit, and God forbid you bring garbage there, 
it will be a disaster. They'll just remove the bone, and that's it, you'll be disabled for life. Therefore, take care of yourself when you work with the back. You can't punch it thoughtlessly. Every movement you make, and every muscle movement you make, should have a basis in your head. Because I repeat again, boxing is in your head. If you get used to it incorrectly, you will act incorrectly. That is, this back will harm you, your preparation, if you approach it incorrectly. The line of your punch, complex angles of punch, that is, they are also set. All this is done with understanding. And the most interesting thing is the punch distance. In boxing, they say, and write, three main distances. But during a fight, when you fight, you have only one distance. This is the punching distance, where you can reach, close, far, in between, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is the feeling of this distance, that you can act at all distances. That is, only one distance is not considered, all distances are considered. Therefore, it is better not to joke with this projectile. When you are punching, when you set, it is better to initially do all movements slowly and calmly. Prudently. I like this word. Because you really calculate everything. And then, over time, over time, speed up and intensify everything. Then, when you've already trained your hands, without bandages, without gloves, because you also have to get used to this. And when especially professionals wrap their hands, there is bandages up to 7 meters. In the competition version 7 meters, a gauze bandage. But non-professionals use like 4 or 5 meters bandages, wrapped around somehow, randomly. Professional training and punching is based on the ternary system. There is sparring, pause and a punching bag. These three things help to set the correct direction, line, distance and so on and so on, together in one. That is, if you only do one punching back, then you are just poor, just poor. One back is not enough for a strong punch. That is, here you need pause and exercises on the mirror and definitely exercises in sparring. I say again, modification of a person in fight, the way you punch a back, you won't punch a real person. He simply won't allow you especially if he is more or less ready. Well, the only thing I can say is that in a tactical picture, when you are already work and understand the modifications, that is, your task in fight is to drive a person at the angle that you rehearsed on the back. That is, you really drive him into a situation where you know very well that this punch will land 100% on target. In tactical work, the sight is set both on the back and in fight, and on the pose, well, and on pneumatic projectiles of any caliber. There are a lot of related things there. You cannot look at the back from just one point of view, like you trained on the back and became a boxer, nothing like that. There are boxing bags hanging in the gym or other places like that, but they don't become boxers. Not only the punch is trained on the punching bag, but also all sorts of defenses. Defensive actions are set up. How to put pressure on it correctly, how to properly parry a punch, where and what, a lot of different things are trained. There are exercises that train the body. One, two, three, one, two. There is one more point. When the back puts pressure on you, then you work with it. But there are exercises where you literally catch the back in motion, correctly calculating the step itself. Here you can make maneuvers from the point of view of defensive forms. For example, dodge, punch, punch from an angle, dive, punch dive punch. 
all distances are set on it. In the following videos, we will definitely tell you in detail about all the possible ways of training on a back and placing such punches on the back as short, medium, long and possible combinations of some techniques without which boxing will be simply poor. So you definitely need to practice it. If the motivation to training has disappeared, then you need to return to the originally first task. That is, the task is always determined by the goal. There are three main goals in boxing. The first goal is to cope with fear. The second goal is to overcome pain. And the third goal is to learn through losing. And that's why they say that in boxing there are three types of coaches. That is, the first coach is fear, the second coach is pain, and the third, most important, is loss. It is important to understand at what point you have stalled in your motivation. Because if this is connected with some kind of internal fears, then all this will be overcome. You just need to continue to work on yourself. If it concerns pain, that is, the recovery process itself stops you. That is, the boys come to boxing, they have watched enough of Tyson there, oh, I want to be like Tyson. But to be Tyson, you need to do one and a half thousand climbs apps per workout. There are about two thousand push-ups per workout. It's crazy work. It's very, very painful. And the third point that simply extinguishes motivation completely is losing. It's all about working on yourself. Losing. If you want to learn to win, then you must learn to lose the training. That is, in training, you learn through losing. Nothing motivates like losing. Therefore, guys, if your motivation has disappeared, you must initially understand why. Where you set yourself up incorrectly or incorrectly defined your goal. You just have to review it again. And you will be motivated just by your revision. At least, that's how it was for me. The main coaches are power, fear, pain and loss. Nothing edifies more than these things. And because of these things, boys turn into boxers. Who is a boxer? A boxer is a person who, on the one hand, does the impossible. That is, as we said, are there unbeatable people? No. But this is the person you should become. Are there honest people? Well, no. This is exactly the person you should become, just like a boxer. If there are no boxers, then this is exactly the person you should become. So, think deeper, don't be superficial.